Our culture and art do not speak to America alone. Today, as always, art knows no national boundaries. Behind the storm of daily conflict and crisis, the poet, the artist, the musician, continues the quiet work of centuries, building bridges of experience between peoples, reminding man of the universality of his feelings and desires and despairs, and reminding him that the forces that unite are deeper than those that divide. My father held out great hope for America's future and the role that the arts would play in the life of our nation. Welcome to the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, where tonight American Ballet Theater presents Swan Lake, one of the best loved ballets of all time. It's a ballet that reaches across generations. My mother took me to see it as a child, and my own children enjoy it today. Swan Lake was first performed more than a hundred years ago, yet it still speaks to audiences because its themes are universal. It's a story about love and the capacity for forgiveness. As the story begins, the beautiful Princess Odette encounters von Rothbart, an evil sorcerer who has transformed himself into a charming man. Enticed by him, she is captured and he imprisons her in the body of a swan. Years later, there's a party in honor of Prince Siegfried's 21st birthday. His mother, the queen, reminds him that it is his royal obligation to marry. At the ball the following evening, she commands him to choose a bride. Realizing that his carefree days are over, Siegfried eventually leaves the celebration, seeking solace in the woods. There he discovers Odette, now the queen of the swans, condemned to suffer von Rothbart's curse forever, unless a man swears to her his eternal love. Only then will the spell be broken.
Swan Lake is considered one of the classical ballet's biggest challenges for a ballerina. In one performance, she really dances two roles, the tender lyrical Odette, the white swan of the second act, and the steely scintillating Odile, the black swan of act three. And the technical challenges of the white swan variation alone, the control is so, so terribly demanding. This is virtuosity on a level of, it's like cream, it's like butter. And so in one evening, you are soft and vulnerable. And then when you come into the ballroom as a deal, you are supposedly wickedly beautiful and seductive and completely dynamic. Technically, now we're talking about the kind of virtuosity that is that what we understand that word to mean. It is fast and brilliant turns. It is high jumping. Who can worry about Jillian's technique? She's such a strong dancer that um, it's a pleasure. I mean, sometimes I get, uh, I just find myself just completely with my, with my mouth open because I'm in the back watching her turning or watching her jumping. And um, I just don't realize that I have to keep going and keep dancing. We meet Odile at the ball Siegfried's mother has organized to introduce her son to his prospective brides. Four princesses from distant lands have come with their retinues, but ultimately the prince is captivated by Odile, von Rothbart's daughter, whom he has transformed to resemble Odette for the occasion. The climax of her dancing, both dramatically and technically, is the famous series of 32 fouettes, dazzling turns in which the dancer's leg whips around the body to propel the motion. When I was little, actually, I made myself go in the studio and do one extra fouette each day until I built up to 32. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the regular 32 fouettes. So I felt musically maybe I could add a little accent here and there. So, um, so that's why I added the few multiple turns and I feel that is um, really a statement to Siegfried to just clinch the deal. She gets him to say what she's been assigned to get him to say and then it's over. That's kind of strange, no? Why would he be attracted to this woman that apparently is so vicious and so Hor horrifying and so like just you can see very clearly that she doesn't love him she's just playing with him but somehow he's drawn by it. In swearing his love to Odile Siegfried betrays Odette condemning her to live as a swan forever. Only after he sees her in a vision does he realize his terrible mistake. He returns to the forest to seek her out and ask her forgiveness. Certainly, Odette has gone through a, a huge journey. But I ultimately feel that the story happens to the prince. His love is not as pure as he thinks it is. When he is tricked by Odile, he doesn't yet understand, I don't think, the difference between the superficial and the real. And when Odette forgives him in the end, it then becomes very clear. It's a story of, of humanity, of um, trying to control your mind and your heart at the same time.
Thank you.